Hello, everybody, and welcome back to our Pep Guardiola recreation series 2022 20, 2023. That is how the season ended. We're going to go through everything in detail. We're going to go through detailed match stats and player stats and all that type of thing at the end of this episode. But for now, we're going to get straight into the FA Cup final and Champions League final. But that is how it ended 92 points, 123 goals scored, 28 against, 28 wins, 8 draws, 2 losses, and average possession of 62% with 20,000 plus passes completed. Right. Two huge games for us to see how this uh, this season's going to end, really, I suppose. And the save in the series, who knows? I mean, if we win both these games, I think we'll probably end this series as a one and done, I think, because we've achieved everything. The tactical recreation is good and it worked. And yes, you might need to be either significantly better than your, than your opposition teams in your league, like a, a top team, just somebody that's expected to, to win the division or... Somebody with specifically a very good striker for this tactic to work. I don't know, maybe it worked with other sides as well. Like I said in the previous episode, if you are using this tactic, please let me know if you are and how you're getting on with it. I'm interested to know, especially as we lead up into, into Christmas. I'm sure a lot of you will be watching this series after the fact, after maybe it's been out for a week or maybe a month. And uh, yeah, whatever it is, that's all Christmas present for me as we get closer to Christmas. Let me know how, uh, how you're getting on with the tactic. Right, so United and Leipzig in today's episode... We need to win two, really. Like I, I've sort of got in my head that we're, it's going to be ending today. But if we lose, if we were to lose both finals, I don't know if we could do that. But then I don't know if we could sit through an entire season of, of really us just dominating teams. Maybe some people would want to watch that. I'm not not entirely sure. But yeah, I really hope that we win these last two games so we can end it the way that it should be done. But we'll see. So yeah, going into today's game, then we're going to have Phil Foden out injured. I'm going to take him up because I don't want him to be a risk for the Champions League final. So I think it's better just to leave him out for this one. He's onto the bench. And also, Jack Grealish is going to be out for this one. He should be back fit enough for the Champions League final uh, to be like, at least to play a part. Lataro Martinez is the only player in the entire squad who's definitely going to be out of both games. Everybody else should be available for at least one, if not both. And we're going to try and get as much out of as we possibly can to make sure he's got as much match sharpness going into the big game, which is in a few uh, days' time. Here we go then. Manchester derby at Wembley for the FA Cup final. Let's get into it. The quadruple is on. Can we do it? Here we go then, first game, as the manager says, I want to pick up what he left off, thank you very much. They are going to play a 4-2-3-1 with a fairly decent side for the counter-attack, you'd maybe say. Ericsson is a pivot, not sure. Not sure about that, that's our team. Expect us to dominate possession. If we score first, I think we'll win. If we don't score first, they could e easily keep countering us throughout the entire match, but we'll see how we go in the game. So you can see the formations match up to each other there. So United did give us a pretty good game, didn't they, in the other final that we had earlier in the season. So it'll be interesting if they can repeat that. But we're not going to do our pressing traps in this one, at least off the not off the start anyway. As uh, so we get enough highlight here for the first highlight of the game. Theo Hernandez on the left-hand side goes past, one goes past, two is going to play across goal. He gets tackled. It could be a penalty early on. It could be, we'll see. And it's been given. It's a penalty to City. Here we go. Who's going to take it? It's going to be Erling Haaland for, I don't know, his 100th goal of the season. What's he going to be? Erling Haaland, is he going to score it? He does. 1-0 City. Come on. That's the first one. That's all we needed. Now they're going to have to come after us, try and press us, try and get the ball off us. And that's where the gaps could open up for us. 1-0 City. Come on. Masak has it. Plays it back to De Gea. De Gea's going to play this now to probably the left centre back there. He tried to force through there to Eriksen. He's lost it. Coman has it. Plays. Surely Kev back in there. He doesn't. Goes all the way across to Theo Hernandez. It's not really the best ball. Uh, Theo Nines plays it across. Erling Haaland headers it. And it's 2-0 City. That's going to probably be game over. Absolutely love that. Come on. A nice bit of pressing from us there. And I think that was a realistic turnover. That sort of board through to Ericsson. That was very reminiscent of the 4-0 of the defeat that United had at home to... Uh, away, sorry, to Brentford early in the season. But actually probably maybe even looked a little more realistic than that. That was a, that was a good turnover. I like that. And that's 2-0 City. I'm probably going to end again. Let's not say that. It's a highlight already now I've said that. Ericsson again getting caught on the ball. Love this from City. Coman gets it. Plays it across goal. Surely Kevin De Bruyne shoots and it's been deflected. It's going to go wide for a corner. But Silva's going to whip in the corner. I think this is the end of the highlights, to be honest with you. I don't think it's really going to be one. Oh, no, there it is. It's 3-0 three, three City. Erling Haaland scores for his 64th goal of the season. 3-0 City. That has got to be game over, surely. Okay, we'll save to the lads. Um, don't get complacent. Got one of those. Yeah, there you go. They've been a triple changer. Staying in the same exact system. They've got Cristiano right up front now. Jamal Siala, how much do we in here? 48. Now, I want to give Jamal some more time. I need to get him as many minutes as possible so he's as effective as possible in the uh, Champions League final. Russia goes through. Score, oh, better say scores, misses it. Stays 3 0. Can Salo off Carl Walker wants to be the first change? In fact, it's not going to make the change yet. Let's make a second then. Can we take off maybe Rodrigo? Throw on maybe Gundogan. As Brian heads it, headed away. 
Ericsson with the second phase corner goes through, plays across to Tapia, to far post to Rashford, headed away again. Jao is going to get there first. He's got an option there if he wants it, doesn't need that now. Now Kevin De Bruyne's got it. Rodders, Rodders has got Bernardo. Bernardo's got options ahead of him. Musiala, does Erling want to get involved in this? Nope. Laporte stays on it. Rodders, Ruben Diaz into Kevin De Bruyne. Kevin De Bruyne back to, Rod uh, to Ruben Diaz. Laporte, Bernardo, so is it in here? The overload that we want? Oh, okay, straight over the top. See you later. Get out of our way. Erling Haaland's. And that's probably the end of the highlight now that he's missed that chance. Okay, six minutes here. We're going to take off Erling Haaland, throw on Komen. I think just to you know, play it safe, really. No, not Komen. Komen's already on, sorry. Let's throw on... Let's make a double change here. Let's throw on Riyad Mahrez. I don't know as a striker. That's the right thing. Do we go Kev up front? So let's go Kev up front. So Erling Haaland off and let's throw on Calvin Phillips. Moving the CDM, move Gundogan up. And let's take off Juan Musiala and throw on Mahrez because Mahrez can't play in the final anyway of the Champions League. So... Be good to get in the minutes here. And the last change probably has got to be Kevin De Bruyne off and we'll throw on probably Dominic. Why not? Let Holler here. The port's got the ball. He's got multiple options. What's he going to do with it? Calvin Phillips has it. Back to Edison. Edison to Ruben Diaz. Could have go in here now. Calvin Phillips, Ruben Diaz. Nothing's really on there. Now he's got what is ahead of him. Well, Calvin Phillips now is. Plays another one out to Bernardo. Okay. Bernardo plays first time passing to Coman. Coman has it. Plays it right across goal. Red Mares hits the post, goes wide. Bernardo Silva then with the corner. He's going to play it across. Far post, headed away. I think that's the end of the highlight. We'll see. Coburn has it still. City absolutely dominant in this game. It's like there's only one team on the pitch and they're in blue. And Ricardo Horta is going to do nothing with this. Is he? No, get off the ball, says Kyle. And that's got to be the end of the game now. There you are. 3-0 to City. FA Cup final winners. That is three trophies done. We need one more for the quadruple. And it's really the big one, isn't it? We've got the domestic treble. I believe City... I believe City did do this though a few years ago, didn't they? They got the domestic treble. So... It's nothing new. Pep's done this before. Can we go one better though and win the big one, at least from City's perspective, and try and win the Champions League? Can we do it? First of all, can we just do it? And second of all, can we do it making it a quadruple? And then we do celebrate the, uh, there we go, we celebrate the Manchester Derby victory, the pick up final at Wembley. Love that. Obviously, it's a local game for a lot of United fans, but uh, not for the City fans. That's come a long trip down from Manchester. Three or two in Manchester to make it uh, to make it three dollar city and hope they enjoy their trip back up north. Congratulations, lads! We'll uh, we'll see you on a few days then for the Champions League final. We'll, we'll say to the boys here. We'll say, um, yeah, celebrate these moments. No acceleration there, right? Any injuries? I don't think so. I don't think there's anything. Was there? No, nope, should be good. Okay, I'll see you in seven days then for the Champions League final. This is the big one. Here we go then, Champions League final. This is the big one. This is the absolutely huge one. Right, the only player that's out is Mares. We can have almost everybody on the bench. We've got 12 places. We've only got 11 here because Mares isn't registered. Everybody else is on the bench. Martini is obviously can't really come on. Probably Greenwich couldn't either. This is a huge one. This is a huge one for us. Um, it all comes down to this, really. The whole save series comes down to this one game, but it's going to be a proper success or not. And it's nine minutes of football. Anything can happen. Uh, let's see how we get on. Your Champions League final team is Edison in goal with Hernandez, Laporte, Diaz, Cancelo across the back, Rodri, De Bruyne, Silva in the middle, Musiala, Foden, Haaland up front. This manager says, go ahead and preview everybody who are born winners, okay? I think you can hear the Champions League music a little bit for the first time. Let's see they got it. Hang on a second. They've got Andreas. Uh, what? And they've got uh, Pedersen. That's like a huge manager's take in that team there. There's the boys. I can't hear the music, but I know that you can right now. Here we go then, big game. We're in our blue shirts with our maroon shorts. Okay, so looking at this, Vario is obviously really good at playing out from the back and traveling with the ball. He's a very good player. So, and he's got Andreas on his side. So the sensible thing to do is not set like a proper trap maybe, but let's just put Haaland on Gavardio so we force it into this side here so they can go that side every time with the ball because they've got basically a fullback at right wing. Lame is not that much better on the ball than, than Kadira. I mean, that, I think that's the, the sensible way to go to try and prevent them getting attacks on that side of the pitch, right? Let's do that. So let's go with you on Gavardio. Let's just do that. Come on, City. I like here. They're going to pop from the back. Gavardio whacks it long. 
And they still get it that side anyway to Andreas. Cancelo intercepts it there. Ruben Diaz. So Edison Laporte, Laporte's got options here. Theo Hernandez. He's a bit of width really from the wing. There he is. Pause wide late. Oh, Theo, what you done? Are you lucky? You're lucky, Theo. Give the ball somebody else who can play now. Absolutely ah, don't board this up again. That's it. Bernardo Silva will do. Bernardo's sort of scrappily got it back. Goes through. Shoots. And it's gone wide. Absolutely nothing's happened in this game. 59% possession towards us now. But nothing's really happened at all. There we go. Highlight. Ruben Diaz. Laporte. To Rodders. Rodders to Laporte. Laporte still has it. Oh, he's given away. Timo Werner. Blocked shot. Is the end of the highlight? Hopefully that is. Get rid of it. Get rid of Edison. That'll do. Yeah. Clip it into an area. Get us to build from there. De Bruyne. Bernardo Silva. Haaland. Is he on? I think he's onside. Erling Haaland goes through. He's going to score. He's going to score. He's going to score it. He's going to score it. Erling Haaland makes it. One of City. Come on, boys. There we go. There we go from City. That's better. That Edison. When I said clear it, I meant like try and just play it into somebody's general area instead of going long, actually up to the striker. I think that I'm surprised he didn't get intercepted, really, but we go through and score one on City. Come on. After, let's say, don't get complacent. Yeah, we're halfway there. Just keep compla don't get compla keep complacent. Don't get complacent, lads. Yeah, that's what I said. Don't get complacent to the boys. Okay. First change is probably going to be, I think, a combination of Musiala and Foden. Let's go Komen for Musiala because he's the least match fit. I think, but uh, I feel Foden has six points who needs to come off as well. I'm not sure what we do here. I think we go Gundo and we do that. Yeah, I reckon we do that. Yeah, that looks like the safest option to us. Haaland's been done. Straight red, Andreas. Get off. Thank you very much, mate. I appreciate all your efforts for me off camera with my own saves, but he, uh, he's a good lad. He's, he's loyal to his manager. Thank you, Andreas. Put the ball here with Komen. Komen drives inside with it. He's going to look to link up with somebody. Gundo has it. Takes a poor touch. Bernardo Silva forces it long. And that was into that. So Holland should come across here and stop Gavardio playing up from the back. Here we go. Stay on Gavardio. That's it. Force it long. That's fine. Can we win the first one? Good. Win the second one? Good. Holland's actually in here. Kings are coming. He's got to score it. He's missed it, Jeff. He's absolutely ballooned it miles over the bar. All right. It's time for the last sub of the game. Right. Oh, Kevin De Bruyne. Oh, that seems like a risky sub. Um, Johnny Stones for... For Rodders. About, oh, no, I can't. Oh, we've made five. Doesn't matter. Just go Tom Mason up then. I don't want to go to any more like defensive than that because they're playing with 10 men and we're sort of doing all right with the way things currently are. Just take a bit more time over the set pieces and kill the game slightly quicker. That's all everyone wants to see from the boys. Gundo's got it. Kevin De Bruyne. Kevin De Bruyne tries to play, but now doesn't quite get there. Carl Walker's got it now. Ruben Diaz. I think having a fresh Carl Walker's good because like having like a third centre-back because if we lose it, by the time they break, he should get back because he's one of the quickest players. Uh, in the game in the defensive areas. They could play at this level anyway. Kevin De Bruyne, Erling Haaland, should have scored. Should have scored for City. Last highlight of the game, hopefully here, it's going to be for us, and hopefully it's going to be a goal just to kill it off. Ruben Diaz, Kyle Walker, as Oasis comes in, on the players to my ears, Ruben Diaz, Ruben Diaz has it, plays into Erling Haaland, is he going to finish it? Oh, it was nearly perfect, it's offside, that'll do, get back lads. This would definitely be the last highlight of the game, I would have thought, unless it's a goal for, for Leipzig. They have the ball here, Roma has it. Lose it to Kyle Walker. Kyle Walker's going to run with it. Kingsley Komen. Ilkay. Ilkay Gunnar's through. Is he going to score it? Oh, is it the bar? What a chance that was. They've gone through. Hydera's in. Oh my Christ. What are you doing, Kyle? Putting it back in the mixer. He's going to get another chance to clear it away. Okay. Komen, just take a red. Just take a red. That'll do. That's fine. Come on, ref. That's got to be time. There's another like minute left. 30 seconds left. Roam. Throws it in. 30 seconds to go. Lima has it. Sit it down. To, uh, sorry, no. Leipzig get down to 10 men. But uh, guy gets to that. That's going to be another 10 seconds gone. That's going to get really close to time being up here. City, cut down the seconds. That's got to be it, referee. That's got to be it. That's got to be it. There it is. Manchester City have won the Champions League. Manchester City have won the quadruple, the Premier League, the League Cup, the FA Cup. And the Champions League, they've won all four trophies playing a Pep Guardiola recreation with the Foot Manager 2023. And that was simply beautiful. What a beautiful, beautiful series to have done here with you for, um, for Foot Manager 20. Oh, hang on. I think there's music playing as well. Sorry. There's music playing above me as well. I think we're celebrating the trophy, aren't we? But there's a, yeah. So we're going to, it's been brilliant. It's just been absolutely fantastic to, to have been able to do all of these trophies in the first season and have this be the first save that I did on my channel for FM23 obviously those of you who know I worked on the game this year 
and to showcase that you can play this kind of football and play it really well and really realistically, especially when you've got the, the right players. And when I say the right players, I mean like the top, top level players. Um, there's, there's a reason why probably it's possible at the lower levels, but I think there'll be times where you're playing against a slightly better side where you're going to get caught in the ball a lot more, which I suppose would be slightly akin to real life. But yeah, this was brilliant. This played out exactly what we'd like to. In fact, let's make sure we, we finish this first. Let's, uh, let's, yeah. yeah. Congratulations, lads. Let's get out of the game before it, uh, you know, some sort of crash thing ruins all of our progress here. Let's, uh, yeah, yeah, let's save that. But you know, just a massive thank you from me to all of you. Uh, this has been brilliant. I've enjoyed, I've enjoyed doing the recreation part, you know, like for those of you that know, um, as those who don't know, I, I am a, or I was at least a football coach and I in real life, have a UFB license. That's what I do, or I did do for a living before I joined SI. And doing these type of saves, I mean, it's been really good. It's been able to keep like, I guess my juices going as it were. Like we're able to like look at things tactically as if it was real life look at problems, try and solve them, try and create problems for the opposition and have them try and solve them. And when things aren't going the way that you planned, like the cup final against United, how do we react? While doing it in a way where we're replicating a real team as well. We're trying to replicate Manchester City and do what they do in real life. And we've got it, we've got it pretty close. Is it absolutely perfect? No. Is anything going to be perfect? No, because there's times where Pep's going to change City depending on the game. And and there's things that basically, yeah, until we see the games play out, we, we don't know. So yeah, I think that was really successful. That was really successful, but let's go into the stats now. Again, I say this before, I've said this before. Uh, there are some stats that are calculated differently by different stats companies, and then again from foot manager towards towards real life. So some stats aren't going to be exactly the same as real life because some stats are just calculated differently within the game to real life. So let's make sure that we just we're aware of that as we go through. But let's start off then. Then let's start off with a bit of a, a bit of player overview. Let's have a look at this. We've got a main view, haven't we? So this is our like pep sort of overview of just mainly things in possession. So look at this then. So let's leave the players in position order and let's take out the first team and just sort them by that probably. So we're going to try and get as many, many of these in as we can. Let's, let's try and just eliminate the two goalkeepers. I've just taken two goalkeepers out of the view because... And let's take Dominic out as well. He might get upset with this, but... Okay, now everybody left is the players that mainly played in the games now out on pitch at least. I think there's many other players that we could remove. So that's that's going to be our list here. So let's have a look at them. So goals, I think quite clearly went to uh, I went to Erling Haaland. 65 goals in all competitions. Like I said before, he could have got a lot more, but there were a lot of games where I subbed him off. I didn't start him to keep him fresh, just stop him getting injured, that type of thing, right? So yeah, he could have got a lot more, but what a player. Probably the best striker I've ever had in an FM save. That's not a new gen. Absolutely brilliant. Coming got a few. Kevin De Bruyne scored quite a few. Some pennons in there as well. Not too much surprising outside of that was there. That's the only thing really. So look at assists. A lot of silver. That's corners and the odd free kick where he took as well. The Goss assists. Theo Hernandez is quite interesting. I think most of those are actually from open play. So Theo Hernandez, Phil Foden, who play mostly on the right. So my left centre mid, my left back, and then my right winger, right centre mid were the biggest assists makers in the team, which is quite interesting. A nice little spread of left to right there. Goals per 90, look at that, 1.47 per game. That's just incredible. That is just incredible from Erling Haaland. Absolutely quality stuff. Assist per 90. So Bernardo Silva, Jamal Musiala on top of that list. That's interesting. Again, if you look at, if we compare Theo Hernandez to Jao Cancelo, that's quite a big difference in assist per 90, isn't it? So it just goes to show the role that they have in combination with what roles are ahead of them can make such a difference because you'd assume that both those players are quite similar for quality, especially going forwards, right? One massively outperformed the other in terms of uh, assists and creativity. He did score two more goals to Cancelo, but quite low on most other things. XG per 90, so Erling Haaland got through. Kings come and broke through quite a lot. And uh, like, Jermaine Musial, I suppose, looks quite good there because he scored 10 goals, but only had 0.35 goals, uh, expected goals. That's pretty good. So you've got... Phil Foden, I think, is probably the best performing here. If you look at expected assists per 90, Foden's expected assists per 90 was 0 0.25. But he had 14 assists, which is the, uh, what, the joint second most or third most there? Third most. But there were players with more expected assists like Jermaine Seattle, but with less overall assists, although he did score 10 in less, in less games, I suppose, as well. But pass completion. So the top centre-backs there had 94% pass completion rate. Now, for those of you that were here and playing... On the FM22 beta, there was a problem or a perceived problem from people. Pass completion was just too high amongst centre backs. Now that's good. I think 94 there, and everybody has been third or 91. For a pep recreation tactic with Manchester City, that shows how 
much. It's improved going into this year. And you can see some really good healthy stats across the board for pass completion there, I think, which is good. Pass is completed per 90. Obviously, our centre-back is always going to get the most. Interestingly, Rodri's ahead of the one of the left-backs there, but you can see how it sort of goes centre-back, CDMs, then sort of full-backs and pivots, and it gets further up the pitch as you go, which it makes sense, I suppose. Dribbles per 90. Now, Theo Hernandez has an incredible 6.75. That is sensational from him. And then Phil Foden's the highest attacking player on 3.46. John Messiano 3.05. It's interesting that Theo Hernandez is that high, but we're going to look at... Where's Jao Cancelo? I got Walker there. Where's Jao? Oh, he's there. So look at the uh, look at the old fullbacks here. For doubles per 90. Like, that's incredibly low for Cancelo, who was in third back attack. That's interesting, see? Interesting stuff. You can you can clearly see the role difference between those two. If you were look, to look at uh, dribbles per 90 and... Maybe even pass completion. Maybe not so much pass completion. But even assists then. Let's go off assists. So these two got seven and six assists. Draws per 90 of 1.95 0 0.90. Then if you take then the two left wing backs, you've got assists of well, only four for Gaia, to be fair. But then Hernandez with 16 and the dribbles per 95 for both of those on a complete wing back versus an inverted wing back that shows the difference in how they perform on the ball, even with like top, top level wing backs with good attributes across the board. Intensity sprints, four full backs across the board. That shows probably how important it must be to have quick, explosive wing backs that are good at whatever you want them to do, whether it's def quick in defending in this kind of system or whether you want them to be quick and good on the ball. I think that if they're going to be, sh if they're going to have that many high intensity sprints, you need players that, that are quick that don't get injured a lot and have good stamina to be able to survive the course of a season. And after that, you then start to see two of my wingers there. Interesting, Calvin Phillips is up there and Rodders. So in fact, you would looking at that, the CDMs are doing more high-intensity sprints generally than central field players are, or close to it. Bernardo Silva's a starter in central field, but so is Kevin De Bruyne. Third choice is like Gundogan. So you can see it does drop off quite a bit. That's interesting. So there you go. Pivot, something to look out for with that. He passes per 90. There we go, right? You're going to see quite a big difference here. So the fullback is that the two fullbacks are there. For some, for some reason, Jao Cancelo is nowhere near as high on that as uh, Carl Walker is. And don't forget, this is open play key passes back in the days. This would have showed us set piece takers as well that are high, but this is just open play. So key passes coming from Theo Hernandez, Bernardo Silva, Jerome Sial, Phil Foden. That's good. That's like our advanced central field player, our starting level wingers. So the backup CMs as well. But but Theo Hernandez is quite special. Theo Hernandez dribbles the most, creates the most, and has got the second most assists. Like Theo Hernandez is probably the best fullback in the game, in my opinion, from just seeing this. I reckon that if you're a top side, you can get Theo Hernandez. You're probably going to do pretty well if he doesn't get injured because he's going to be good at recovering on the counter with high-intensity sprints, good at sprinting forwards, good at creating, good at what can he do, what cannot uh, Theo Hernandez do. Brilliant season from him. Just a quick look at the defending. This is obviously wasn't our thing, was it? But we'll just have a quick look. In the end, the centre-backs did pretty well. I mean, that's not too much to look at. Saka one ratio. Let's have a look at that. Theo Hernandez, top of the list. There you go. Kyle Walker, second. Kingsley Coman, 77%. Look at that. Love that. Putting a foot in. And yeah, the other fullback. So where's Jao Cancelo? Because Jao Cancelo is starting to show me that he's a quality fullback, but he's not quite on the level of a Theo Hernandez in the game. At least, okay, they were in different roles. But... So far, that's what I'm seeing. Like, 67% is pretty poor. And he's first choice right back. Interceptions per 90. Theo Hernandez is second behind Kyle Walker. Interesting, the left backs were up there. Dalkan Sosa's done pretty good in that as well. Blocks per 90. Theo Hernandez top of the list. Like, Theo Hernandez is showing what a great player he is. Pressures attempted per 90. Bernardo Silva and Musial. Interestingly, that was my starting left central field player and my starting left winger, despite the fact that Bernardo Silva's on a Mazzala support and De Bruyne was on CM attack. Interesting. Okay, then let's have a look at some team stats. Average possession. We'll start off with the, the easy one. 62%, 62% possession and 20,304 passes completed with a pass completion rate of 88%. Pretty good. And I'm sure that if I'd have kept playing this save over and over again, like, like season, season, and season on... We would have just got better and better. It would have been like 63, 64, 65. Hour. It would have gone 62% average possession, 63% average possession. I think it just would have kept going up and up and up as the seasons go on. So the passes go completed to a point, the possession probably would have gone up uh, slightly more. Maybe not so much passes completed as much as... I think what Tottenham have got, 22, 23,000, um, would have been pretty 
desirable for his first season, but it is what it is. Goals, 123, which is pretty good. Goals per game is 3.24. Expected goals over performance. That's interesting. So we scored 20, well, 19 and a half goals more than we should have done from our chances created. And Liverpool scored 11 less. So that's quite, a, it's quite interesting. Our expected goals was 103 which is by far the best in the league. But that's, that's, that's an important stat, I think, there. Non-penalty, actually, there was, was still almost 100. That's also something to look forward to there. Non-expected goals per 90, non-penalty ones, 2.58. That's a good again. Penalties taken Liverpool with 11. Of course, it was uh, 7 for us. Cross-completion was the highest for us, which is good. Goals from corners, we scored 9, which is the second highest behind United with, with 11. We scored 12 in direct free kicks, though. There you go. Chances created was 229, shots 4804, shots on target 348. Basically, I'm just going through all this so that you can pause and have a look yourself. If you want to look at the video and pause it, I'm going to probably, I'm probably going to leave the bits in where I'm like clicking through to the other ones so you can see and have time to pause it. Conversion rate 15%. So that was the highest in the league. We converted 15% of our chances, which is pretty good, I would say. Or at least it is compared to everybody else. So I don't know. Game 21 shots per game. Interesting. Dribbles main. Now, this is always an important one. Dribbles main. So, we did not win by having quick players and dribbling at the opposition the whole time. We were 13th for dribbles made. Now, it's very rare that you see a tactic do really well in FM in previous years when you're not top of the dribbling made charts where you've got pacey players, pacey wingers, pacey fullbacks that run at players, take players on, you know, and make things happen. But we did it here. High intensity sprints, we were top of that list. Interesting. Expected goals against, we were bottom of the list, 29. That's pretty good. We conceded uh, two goals from corners. Not many teams conceded from corners, apparently, at the top. 20 clean sheets, tackle on ratio. We were 16th in the list. You can see, trying to be aggressive and tackle hard and press everywhere. Didn't work out that well for us in terms of tackles completed. Interceptions 19th. I mean, that's expected because we had the ball so much. Opposition passes per defensive action. We were top of the list with 2.97. So the opposition were only completing just about three passes before we performed an offensive action. Tackles, fouls. Etc. Final third passes, so pitch tilt, field tilt was pretty good for us. We managed to get only 1,087 passes against us in the final third. And I don't know how many it was for. I missed that one on the way through. And uh, tennis 100%, nice. Net chance to spend. We were 11th with 30 million, and salary were top of that list by a little distance, but, but there we are. Yeah, please do reach out to me in the comment section. Let me know how you found this series, if there was anything that helped you. What it was, I know a lot of you do watch the the episodes and and just don't usually comment, and that's that's absolutely fine. I absolutely love the fact that you're being a part of the ch the channel and you're coming in in to watch. But for this last episode, please let me know watching this if there was one thing in the series that helped you that you maybe didn't know before, or made you think about something in a different way. Please let me know, and the reason is that it may make me position my video slightly differently going forwards. Um, because of my position, I can't do how to videos. I I don't think it's appropriate. I do how to videos. So, but I like to do things from my perspective. And then there's things that I feel like I can help with from my perspective that can help people. Um, I want to be able to do that. So just, yeah, please let me know if you've watched it and you thought, oh, that actually really helped me or that made me think about things like differently or I didn't know that. Yeah, please let me know. And if you enjoyed it as well, let me know if you enjoyed the, uh, the series with the recreation of Manchester City and Pep Guardiola. This will be the last episode of this series, which is, I mean, it's fine. It's not the end of the tactic. Now, if you follow me on Twitch, we'll be doing a series at some point, I'm sure, in the future. We're going to use this tactic and use it with a different team. And let's see if it works in a different league with a slightly lesser team or something like that uh, and to that nature. But in terms of this save, that is going to do it. Erling Haaland is amazing. Manchester City are amazing. You've all been amazing. And like I say, it's a massive, massive thank you for me. Hope you enjoy from 23. Enjoy it. Enjoy your saves. Please let, please let me know how you're doing. And hopefully, uh, yeah, drop a like. And uh, if you want to subscribe as well, that lets me know that you're wanting to come back a bit more as well. So thank you to all of you for watching. I appreciate you all. And I'll see you all in the next series. I don't know what the next series is going to be, to be honest, now, now that I say that. Because the same one is going to carry on because it's not finished. We didn't have the same level of success in the first season, which is going to bloody be fixed. But yeah, go, I don't know what the next series is going to be, but I'll probably wait till this episode's out so I'll get a bit of feedback from what people are thinking. If there is any other recreation you'd like to see, let me know as well, because we could always go and look and doing that, look, look to do that as well. But uh, yeah, that's going to do it. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you all next time.